Happy New Year to you in advance. It is my prayer that the Lord will bless us. This year we're stepping into the year 2024. It is a privilege to see the year, the end of this year. It has been a very challenging year for a lot of people. But here we are. Within a few hours, we are going to step into the new year. It is my prayer that as we go into the word of God, the Lord will address our hearts. And those of us who are going to watch this video in the new year or subsequent time, may the Lord God Almighty use this word to minister to you according to your needs. Let us pray. Our God, we thank you. Our Savior, we worship you. Thank you for the gift of life. This 2023 that is about flipping away, you like like a page, you are about flipping it off. This year, the devil had his own agenda, but he failed. You made him fail. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty Savior. We appreciate your holy name. O God, our King, we ask that you come and speak to us. As we step into the new year, Lord, address our hearts. The goal is heaven. Many are weak, many are distracted. But Lord, help us to be focused. In Jesus name. Amen. Please kindly subscribe to this channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. Please help us to like and share this video so that as you like and comment, YouTube can recommend it to other people. For those of you watching on Facebook, please do the same. Follow this page. The good Lord will bless you in Jesus name. And for those of you who would like to support our ministry, our account details, will be put on the screen. Please uh, don't forget to support us so that we can continue the work of God and also support those in need, especially this festive season. So today we're talking about heaven, our ultimate goal. Heaven, our ultimate goal. People have different reasons from actually going to church. A lot of people go to church for business connections. A lot of people go because of the socialization. They just want to socialize from Monday to Saturday. They've been busy. And they just want to go to church for the, for the Sabbatarians. From Sunday to Friday, they've been busy. And they just want to socialize. That's the reason some people go to church. There are people who go to church because they want to meet with certain people and have their meetings. There are others who go to church because of the music, entertainment. People have different reasons, but for those who are in Christ, who are born again and who know exactly what they're going to church to do, they go to church to worship God. What is your reason for going to church? What is your reason for serving God? Is it heaven? Or are you just going because you were born into Christianity? Or one way or the other, you have become a Christian. You find yourself in Christianity and you just want to be a part of it. I was telling someone some about an hour ago, I was telling someone that well, okay, that was when we were praying. I said, I'm not a Christian because I was born into Christianity. I'm not following God because uh, I was born into Christianity. I have seen evidences myself. Why are you going to church? Why are you a Christian? This is a race that majority of people fail at the end. 
Why are you a Christian? Why are you going to church? Why are you even a believer? This is what we want to look at today. And it's my prayer that the Lord God Almighty will bless this words in our hearts. Let's look at the test for today. This is a letter of Jesus Christ to the church in Smyrna. And also the angel of the church in Smyrna write, I'm reading from Revelation chapter 2, 8 to 11. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna I write, These things, see the first and the last, which was, which was dead and is alive, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but at the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Praise God. This is a powerful word from the Lord. The Lord is using this word to call us to order again. So that we can have a rethink. And for those of us who are on the path of righteousness, who know exactly why we are going to church, it is a time for us to stress in the faith we have in Christ. This is Jesus Christ telling the church in Smyrna. If you read this passage, you will know he's telling them that the ultimate goal is not their life. It's not about wealth. He said, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. You are rich according to my own definition. You may not have money, but you are rich. Because you have the crown of life. You were saved. You are rich. The striking truth in this passage is Jesus Christ telling them in verse 10. He said, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. How many parents will advise their children to be faithful unto death? That means, even in the face of death, I still want you to believe and gladly submit your life. It would have been very possible for John the Baptist to, to renounce his faith. It would have been very, very possible for him to say, okay, let me talk to the people that I was wrong. Remember, Herod, fear him. Herod held him at a very high esteem. But he was faithful unto death. Jesus Christ said, that blessed are those who are not offended because of me. If you are not offended on account of Jesus Christ to the point of giving up your faith in him, he is saying, I will give you the crown of life. 
Let me tell you one truth. If I were to be consulted before coming into this world, I wouldn't have come here. If they had consulted me and shown me what life really is, I will never come here. Even if I am told you're going to be as rich or richer than Elon Musk, I will say no. Why? Because of the risk involved. Uh, we're going to read Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the paths of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and glory. Jesus is not an enemy. Jesus is a savior. But why will the Savior be coming with the clouds of heaven and all the tribes of the earth mourn? Why will they mourn? It is because the whole world is under the power of the evil one and only a few people choose to be wise in this generation. Majority of humans are on their way to destruction. They are on the path to destruction. Even when the Lord says, come out of that path, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Nobody wants to take heed to the voice of salvation. How, why are you... Going to church, is heaven your goal? We have about one third of the population of the world identifying themselves as Christians. How many people are going to heaven? Listen, the Bible says that all kindreds of the earth, all kindreds, now let's look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Revelation 1 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. All kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Majority of people are on their way to the path of destruction. Today I'm talking to Christians directly. Majority of people who identify themselves as believers, as saved people, are on their path, are on their way to the path of destruction, to the bottomless pit. They are heading to that bottomless pit that is prepared for the devil and his angels. And not many people care about it. Is heaven your ultimate goal? Or you have another goal? Imagine a child who went to school. Gets himself involved in uh, student politics. And every time you as a parent, you see him in the news. Maybe the president of the uh, student union organization. You see your child always talking with governors talking with presidents, and mingling with top-class people in the society. And then finally he comes home, and he comes without a certificate. And he returns home without even knowing how to read and write. I mean, like his colleagues. Imagine him passing through the school, but his school never passes through him. Imagine a child you are so proud of. Whenever you see him in the news, you tell everybody, this is my son, this is my daughter. 
I'm very proud of him. Imagine a situation, he comes home and he comes home without a certificate. Why did you send him to school? To become a graduate, to be educated. Now he's back, he's not educated. He's not a graduate. But he was everywhere. This is how a lot of Christians are living their lives. Is heaven your ultimate goal or you have another goal? There are lots of people who have gone to the church to hide there. They go to the church to hide, to perpetrate evil. Imagine people going to the ark of Noah. Instead of entering into the real ark, they stay by the corners of the ark. They hide themselves by the sides of the ark into different crevices, like different places outside the ark. That is what a lot of people are doing today. They don't want to be in the ark. A lot of people are in church, but they are not saved. Is heaven your goal? Now you see that it's even difficult for most pastors today to correct their members. I was staying close to a church. They go to church every morning and sometimes every evening. But when you look at the things they put onto church, I know we don't see the heart of people, but what people wear is a reflection of the state of their hearts a lot of times. A lot of times, the what people put on is a reflection of the hidden man of the heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We are our thoughts. A good tree bears good fruits. You can't be good inside and you bear evil fruits. Every time, they always going to church, always going to church, always going to church. But you don't see the Christianity reflecting in their lives. And this is what I say. How many people are in church and don't commit fornication today. But have we not heard that no fornicator will go to heaven? Have we not heard that no sexually immoral person will be permitted to enter? Have we not heard that no thief will make heaven? Today we see Yahoo boys internet scammers. Criminals donating money in church. They even throw money up and pastors are happy. <laughs> they throw money up. After all, God needs the money. Listen, God doesn't need the money of scammers. God doesn't need such money. And you and your congregation, you will end up in hell if you don't repent. A lot of businessmen have invested in the church because they feel that the church is a business and they feel if they put in some money, they should be able to make some profit out of it. But the church is the ark of Noah. The church is the kingdom of God. The church is not for business and for all those who have invested in the church, who are making profit of people at the expense of their souls and at the expense of the gospel, the true gospel of Jesus Christ, they will receive their reward in full. And it is going to be very, very bitter for them. I'm not a fool. I am not a fool. I have prophetic gifts. But I will never, I will never in my life, in any day of my life, 
monetize it or use it the way a lot of people use it. The gifts of God are free. And I will never measure my ministry on it. Because that is not my number one calling. My primary call is to evangelize the gospel of salvation. Listen, we have come to live in a time that majority of Christians are fulfilling 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 5, and then following. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days, perilous times, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own Serfs, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, obedient to parents, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural fashion, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. This is a sad time. The perilous times are now. We are living in the perilous times. People who hate good. People who love evil. Look at the this phrase here despises of those that are good today if you are good a lot of people will despise you as a matter of fact we are living in a time that if you decide to dress well as a female or you cover your hair a lot of people are going to approach you to ask you if you are a muslim and if you go to church dressed like a 16th century woman, you may be unfortunate to have your pastor's wife coming to you or a female pastor coming to you to tell you that, oh, you look so odd. Why are you dressing this way? Why are you covering your hair? Yes, a form of godliness. This is a time we have come to live in. It is a time that people have a form of godliness. And they deny the power of holiness. When they see people who do evil, oh, that is your best friend. If they see a false prophet, that is your best friend. But when they see someone who speaks the truth, that is your worst enemy. As a matter of fact, today, the battle against the truth is so fierce that you should be ready to lose your life if you want to speak the truth. But no matter what, the gospel of Jesus Christ must go to the end of the earth. Is heaven your goal? Or you just want to go to church to make a name? Are you among those who are hiding in the church to do evil instead of being at the church to be born again, to be a part of the kingdom? Are you among those who are hiding in the church because they don't want anybody to suspect them? Why are you in church? Is heaven your goal? Are you in church because your primary purpose is heaven? Is heaven your ultimate goal? Why about entering a new year? Is heaven your goal or are you just going to church? Ask yourself, if I die today, will I make heaven? This is a simple question that we must ask ourselves. If I die today, will I make heaven? Simple question. Will you? I ask myself this question 
many times. If I die today, will I even make heaven? Will I see God's face? Is heaven your goal? Are you aware that those who have known Christ in this world are going to have greater torment in hell? Why? Because the truth they knew in the world is going to haunt them. Those who know the truth, those who have preached the truth, the truth is going to be like swords, red hot swords, being pierced into the heart every second. Why? Don't you make up your mind. Today is the last day of this year. 31st of December. 2023. Why don't you make up your mind? I have been praying. I said, God, I need a revival in my life. I want to be more serious with you. Listen, I know personally that it is the work I have done here that I'm going to receive the reward. So I want to put in more effort. Listen, we don't have more than 120 years in this world. As a matter of fact, for someone who is 75 years old, you should be getting ready for death. But that's not all. Even if you are 15 years old, even if you are 10 years old, you have to get ready because death has no age bracket. A death knows no age bracket. Death doesn't think about your age. Even if you are a day old, he could come for you. Let's get ourselves ready. The new year is coming. Let's get ready. Are you ready to make, meet your maker? Am I ready? Why are you going to church? Why are you a Christian? Is it because you want to make heaven or because you have other reasons? If you do not have heaven as your primary goal, you have been deceived. Unfortunately today, many of those who are pastors today in this generation do not have heaven as their primary goal. Imagine a leader who is leading you to the promised land and he himself doesn't want to enter. That is not his concern. Where do you think he's going to lead you to? Please reflect on your individual life. That this new year, Heaven must be the goal. Heaven must be the goal. Nothing else but heaven. Nothing comes before that one. I've made up my mind that even if I'll die poor, I will like it. Even if I die through the gun, I will appreciate it on the condition that I make heaven. Is that your goal? Remember, if you miss heaven, you will never miss hell. There are only two destinations. Two destinations only. It's time to get serious with our individual lives. Look at what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 9 and 10. Wherefore we labor, Brethren, why are you laboring? Why do you give offering? Why are you laboring? Why do you labor? Are you laboring for others to reap? Or you have the mindset to reap? Why are you running this race? Are you running this race because you see others running? Or is it because you have the crown of life in view. Why are you running this race? Let's continue with the passage. 
Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Acceptance. Acceptance. Acceptance by the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Acceptance by the God of Gods. Acceptance by the Judge of all mankind. Verse 10. For we must all for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in the done in his body, according to that he had done, whether he be good or bad. Now we are already on the queue to meet our maker. Are we even aware that we are on the queue? Do you know that as I am talking now, as you're listening to me right now, somebody is leaving this world right now. Somebody just dropped dead. We are on the queue. And we will all appear before the judgment seat of God. Christian, believers, don't give up on your faith. If you see those when... They tell them the truth here. They say, oh, I don't want to attend this church anymore. I don't want to belong to this ministry anymore. They switch. Some of them, any little thing can offend them. As they will say, oh, I don't want to give to God anymore. Oh, I don't want to support this pastor anymore. Oh, listen. It is what you have done on earth that you are going to reap in heaven. There is difference between salvation and rewards. Everyone that is saved has a free gift of life. But rewards are different. Rewards is about what you have done. How much did you use your talents while in the body on earth? That is what is going to determine what our reward is going to be. I don't want to look at people anymore. I don't want to consider those who are unfaithful. This is a personal race. I don't want to compare myself with people who don't preach the truth. Though it is well with them, they have all the money they need. They even have something to throw away to buy expensive cars and live luxurious life. But what is their destination? He who loves last, loves best. I want to laugh last. God provides my needs. He can also provide your needs if you surrender to him. As we enter this new year, and as we continue in this year 2024, may the Lord God Almighty give us his grace to pursue heaven and pursue heaven with all our strength so that we can be found in him, so that we can be accepted in him, so that we can be accepted by him, so that we can be accepted into his kingdom. On the last day, let us pray. God, a lot of people are giving up. May we not be in that number. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, help us never to be in the number of those who are giving up on their faith in God. Lord, please help us. Father, help us. King of kings, help us. Let us have heaven as a primary goal. You said in your word, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. Help us to seek your kingdom and your righteousness, Lord. Help us to seek your kingdom. Lord, for those who have been running, don't let their human weaknesses stop them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you that the Lord will see you through. 
May 2024 be a year of emancipation in your life. 2024, let it be a year of victory for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke every power of the devil. I rebuke the works of darkness. I rebuke every manipulation of the wicked ones. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord see you through. Those of you who have been supporting our ministries, I pray for you that the Lord will support you. The Lord will lift you up. The power of the Lord will envelop you from every unnecessary expedition. I seal all your faith with the blood of Jesus Christ. The things that make people to stumble will never make you stumble. Lord, our God, as many that are sick, as many that are having one challenge on the other, Lord, step into their situation. Support your people. Support your children, O Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lead us in this new year and help us to be faithful to you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for watching. Please, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, The Narrow is Christ for Only Church. If you're watching on Facebook, please like this video, follow our pages. And also, uh, if you like to give and support us, especially this festive season, to enable us to reach out to those who are in need, please do so. Uh, next time, school is going to resume January 7, and we have our children in our scholarship scheme over 80 of them from um, primary school to the university level. Please support us so that we can reach out to those who I need and also our different programs that we carry out through our charity organization. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you in the name of Jesus. Please share this video with others. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.